Hi, I'm Lisa Ryder. This is a quick and easy SoCal guide to vermicomposting, sponsored by Waste Management. So what is vermicomposting? Well, vermi just means Latin for worms. And it's basically composting with worms. It's a great way to recycle your food waste and garden gold. A nutrient-rich fertilizer called castings, which is basically worm poop. So anyone can worm compost. You can do it in an apartment. You don't need a yard. You don't need yard waste. All you need is food waste in a bin. So let's get started. To get started with worm composting, you're going to need a bin. You can buy a pre-made bin like the Wrigley Ranch, which we're going to demonstrate today. Or you can make a homemade bin. There's directions on my website. Two 10-gallon tubs with a lid on top and you drill some holes. There's lots of how-to videos on YouTube. Those are really great too. And just check the link below. So I've put together my bin. It only took a few minutes and it comes with instructions. Next, the most important thing is to find the proper location. Worms need shade. So it could be a garage, it could be a covered patio, or it could be inside. But worms are living beings and they are like us. And their ideal temperature is between 50 and 75 degrees they prefer. But up to 90 degrees are okay. Below freezing, they will freeze. Um, if it's over 95, bring them inside. Uh, you can cool them down by putting some moistened newspaper and some ice cubes on top and that'll help cool the bin. Now we're going to assemble the bin. So the bin comes in three layers. The bottom layer is solid and the other two layers have slats on the bottom. The cardboard you're going to use. So this cardboard is going to go into the top layer because this is where the worms are going to be and this is where we're going to have our bedding, the worms, and the food. This is where the action is. This is the penthouse. Think of it that way. That's where the top layer is. So we got the cardboard in the bottom and it comes with a brick of core, which is coconut fiber. And we need to rehydrate this and it makes it into this nice sort of fluffy um, peat moss type material. So I added water to this and in about 15 minutes, it turns into this nice fluffy material. And this is the bedding that we're gonna add into the bin. So what I'm gonna do is just start with adding some of the core. Okay, just dump it all in. You might want to save a little bit at late. Okay. So now I've got the core in there. I'm also going to add a little bit of potting soil. And the potting soil is for grit. Also adds bacteria and fungi, which are also part of the decomposers, along with the worms, that help break the food down. So they're very important. So add a little bit of soil. And that's potting, it's bagged potting soil. You could also put your own soil in. Then you're going to add a little bit of newspaper, shredded up newspaper, or you can use office paper, either one. So this is really the dry material because you're going to be putting in a lot of wet, high nitrogen food. And the, the paper is the carbon. It's going to absorb a lot of the smells. It's going to keep your bin from smelling. Okay? So now we've got a nice cozy bed for the worms. And we're all ready to add the worms. So you, you're going to need to order these worms online um, or find someone that, that raises them. These are red wigglers. Asina Fatita is their name. Make sure they are the red wigglers. Um, these are the type of worms that want to be in this environment where there's a lot of rotting organic food. If um, these are not the same worms that are going to be in your yard, they're not the same worms that are in your compost bin if you have a backyard bin. These are specifically really um, suited for a, um, an organic rich environment with a lot of rotting food. So I'm going to take the worms and I'm just going to dump it in to the bin. And you can see there's a lot of worms. So a pound of worms is about a thousand worms and a pound of worms will eat about a pound of food a day. So worms eat their weight each day. So imagine if we ate our weight in food a day. So let's say we weigh 110 pounds. That's a lot of food. So worms eat a lot compared to their size. These are red wigglers. They're really kind of tickly, not gross, and they're moving around and in the sun they immediately go down. So they're, they're going to start moving down right away. 
So here's some fun facts to impress your friends with. So worms are the earth recyclers. They get a bad rap because they're um, slimy, and they're slimy because they breathe through their skin, and that's why they have to stay moist. Um, all worms are both a boy and a girl. They're hermaphrodites, and they both drop an egg when they mate. So it's a very equitable universe. There's no teeth, so they can't bite you. They're uh, blind and they're deaf, and how they hear or sense is they sense vibration like snakes do. And do not cut a worm in half. If you cut a worm in half, you don't get two worms. You get a dead worm, unfortunately. When you buy a worm bin through a city-sponsored classes, most of the bins are going to come with worms. If you just buy the bin online, you probably have to buy your own worms. There's lots of resources online. Make sure they're red wigglers. Welcome worms. We're going to throw them in the bin and get started. And now give them some food. Let's feed these guys. They're hungry. So for those of you who have already compost, you'll notice that worms eat a lot of the same things that you put into a compost bin. And you can store your food scraps in like a little uh, Tupperware or Rubbermaid thing with a, a top. And you can keep it closed and keep it in the refrigerator around your counter. Um, or you can put it in a special bin that's got like a filter on the top. There's lots of things online. Gardeners.com has lots of different uh, options. They got metal ones and ceramic ones, um, but you can do plastic bag or just any little container. So it's going to be vegetarian things from a plant. So you want to make sure you can, well, eggshells, except for eggshells. You can put eggshells, just make sure you crunch them up. They do take a while to break down, but you can put in any kind of fruits and vegetables. Got tortillas, lettuce, beet heads, again, lots of eggshells. Um, let's see, tea bags and coffee grounds, and lettuce, apple cores, and put the, the filter in with the coffee grounds. A little, a little bit of onions are okay. Some beet greens, and you can e even put in some paper towels and napkins. Just remember that these are trees, and just to you know use them sparingly, um, and to try to use tea towels whenever you can and just throw them in the washer because um, those are trees we're using here. So how often do we feed our worms? Well I feed mine about once a week and I will put like a container this size but when you first get your bin and you get started just a couple handfuls is all you need. When worms go into a new environment um, it's a little stressful for them and they will immediately go down below and we don't want them to go down we want them to stay up in the bedding and where the food is. So just a couple handfuls to start with and then after about three or four weeks you can start increasing the amount of food. How do you know if you're overfeeding? One, it might smell and two, the food's not going to be eaten. If you go to your bin you see the food's not being eaten, just slow down and um, feed them a little less and just do it a little slower to build up. So worms are like a supply and demand. They will end up increasing their population as you increase the food. So what happens if you go on vacation? Do you need to get um, pet sitter for your worms? Not necessarily. It depends. If you go for a few days or up to three weeks, the worms will be fine. Just give them a lot of food before you leave. If you go away for like a month or so, then you should have somebody come and feed your worms because the uh, population will decline if they're not getting food. And, you know, they won't survive if they go a couple months without food. So be sure to feed your worms if you're gone for very long. So there's a lot of food worms don't like, and here are the ones you should avoid. They don't like spicy foods, they don't like pungent foods, garlic and onions for instance. Just go sparingly if you do put those in. Citrus, they don't like citrus, it burns their skin, or pickled foods. Nutshells, ga uh, grass and, uh, and yard trimmings you don't need to put in your bin. No animal products, no dairy, no meat, no oily foods, no sweets, and no animal manures. Now, if you put those in the bin, they probably would eat a lot of that, but we don't want to have any kind of attraction for, for critters or rodents. So that's why we say keep the meat and dairy out of your bin. So now that the worms have been fed, let's put these guys to bed. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover it up. You always want to bury it, bury the food scraps. That's how you keep fruit flies away. So what I'm going to do is take some more of the core and cover it up, cover up the food and once you, you don't have to do this every time you feed your worms, but you do want to make sure, because I didn't put all the core in, so we can put it, more of it in now, we'll probably put most of it in actually. So you want to cover it up and 
when I feed, I might just put a little bit of newspaper in my bin just to cover it up. After you feed the worms, you want to give them a little bit of water. Not much, you just want to spray the bin with a little bit of water just to moisten all the paper that you have in there. And like I said, I add newspaper about uh, once a week or, or twice a month, and that should be fine. You'll know um, they do need to have it. And again, you can put in some sections of the paper as well. And now you've got a nice cozy bed for your worms and you're ready to just leave them be and they're gonna be fine for another week. I want to show you what an established bin looks like. So here is my personal bin. And we'll talk about some of the issues that you can have with your bin. Now, number one, a lot of people fear that it's gonna smell. Your bin should not smell. But if it does, um, it just means maybe you've got too much food in. And so you might want to take a look and maybe take some of the food out. It also means you need to have more of dry stuff like shredded newspaper. So just go ahead and shred up some more newspaper and put it in your bin. Or office paper is fine too. Or you can even put like sections of the paper in your bin like this, and that will help absorb um, the, the wet and smelly foods. Um, another thing, number two, would be fruit flies. That tends to be a little bit of a problem that people might have in the summer, and the reason is the fruit fly larva is on the fruits and vegetables when you buy them in the summer, and the larva um, is just going to grow, and they're going to have fruit flies. You can possibly have fruit flies. That's why we have them in our kitchen. So what you can do is just make sure that when you put food in the bin, that you cover it, so bury it. And that way the fruit flies don't have access to the food. Okay, so make sure it's good and covered. And just with the bedding, you wanna cover it up with the core. And then make sure you have a shredded newspaper over it. And then you can layer some sections on top of it. And again, you wanna make sure you have a little bit of put dry paper in there, you want to make sure you put a little bit of water in there, a little bit of moisture. So the third issue could be ants. Some people have a problem with ants or occasionally have an ant. I haven't had a problem, but if you do, just um, maybe you could put a little bit of um, hot chili powder around the perimeter of your bin or some borax, again, outside your bin, never inside your bin. Also, you could use ant traps, again, outside your bin. You could use a chalk barrier outside your bin or a little bit of petroleum jelly around the outside of your bin, and that should keep the ants out if you do happen to have a problem. But only do it if you actually have a problem. After you've had your bin and you've been feeding your worms for a couple of months, you're going to want to get some castings, which are basically the worm compost. And this is super rich, thick, concentrated um, black gold for your plants in your garden. So you're going to have some within about two months in the top layer of your bin. And in order to harvest that out, you're gonna to wanna to start feeding on one side of your bin. Then the worms are going to go over to that side and then they'll abandon the other side. So um, then you can go and pull some of the compost out. So what I'm gonna show you here is I'm gonna show you a little section where there's no, um, there's no food basically. So I'm gonna look in and I'm gonna see all this nice black stuff. That is all finished compost, also known as castings. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that in a container and then if there's any worms in there, I'm going to throw the worms back out. But that basically is the same as this. I'm just going to put it into a container. And I'll put it right in here, in fact. And oops, there's a few little wormers. Take these guys out, put them back to work. Okay. And this and any other big chunks, if you happen to see like some eggshells or avocado skins, some of the things that take a while to break down. And a few eggshells in your garden are perfectly fine too. Okay. And that's ready to go into your garden. So it took a few months to get the first um, worm castings in the top. After about six months or so, you're gonna have a lot more casings. These are basically a worm factory. You know, these guys just are constantly producing worm poop. Um, so compost casting, it's the same thing. So what I'm gonna do is this top layer, my working tray, I'm gonna move this over and then show you that all the stuff, because it's got so much and so full, now I've got castings falling through to the second layer. And this is all ready to just put in your garden as well. So what I'm gonna do is just scoop it out and um, I'm just gonna use, use your hands or you can use a shovel. And look at that, that's just an amazing black gold all ready to just put into your plants. You can put it on your potted plants or in your garden. So I'm just gonna add that to my little 
container here of all my other stuff. This is going to be more um, filtered because that one is going to have food and whatnot in it and worms. This is going to have mostly just, just uh, the castings. Again, ready to go. So we've done all this work. We've got these beautiful, rich castings, also known as worm compost, worm poop. What do we do with this? We are going to put it in our garden. Um, if you don't have a garden or somewhere to put this, this makes an incredible gift. So put it in a nice little container, put a little bow on it, give it to one of your gardener friends or anybody that has plants would love to have some of this. So how are you going to use it? Well, you can put it in with your potted plants. And I've got some potting soil in this pot right here. And this is just regular bag potting soil. And then I'm going to maybe add um, about uh, no more than a quarter of the pot should be worm castings because they're really thick. And if you're going to put a quarter of worm castings in there, I don't want to use them all up, but you get the idea. So about one quarter is you might want to put a little bit of uh, perlite in there, vermiculite, for a little bit of more drainage. Okay. Um, another thing you can do, oh, I'm going to put my little plant in there as you can see. So I've got my little potted plant. I'm going to put it in there, a little tomato plant. Maybe put a little more compost around it. And then do cover it with a little bit. Mix it in really good uh, because worm castings just sitting on top of the soil will dry out. So you either want to put mulch or um, some wood chips or a little extra uh, potting soil on the top. Um, but wood chips would be great for keeping the moisture in. All right. So that's what, that's a couple of things you can do with it. Next, you can put it in the garden and put it lay it right on your raised beds. So every time you um, you go to plant in your raised bed, just put like an inch or two of worm compost. Or if you're actually digging a plant into the ground, like let's say you're just putting this into the ground, you just want to take like a handful of the worm castings and put it in before you put your your plant into the ground. Another great thing about the castings is you can make what's known as the famous worm tea. Now, um, I'm not gonna show you how to do that today. That There's a lot of instructional videos on YouTube. Um, there is a little bit more involved. So I'm gonna just show you some easy ways to deal with it um, and to use your castings. So what I do is I actually make a liquid fertilizer out of this. In addition to using it around my plants just as is, um, another thing you can do is basically turn it into like a liquid fertilizer. So what I'll do is I'll get a, a, a water-filled watering pot and then I'll take just a cup of the compost of the finished castings and then I'll just pour them in to the watering can and then let it dissolve and wait about 24 hours because our tap water tends to be chlorinated so after 24 hours um, it does take the chlorine out of the water and then um, you can use it in your garden. So, but use it within 48 hours. So that's one way, an easy way, especially for like indoor plants. I'll use that um, to water my plants. Another thing you, you're gonna get in the worm composting process is leachate, or um, it's the affluent from the, the worm composting process. The bottom layer, which is the solid layer, um, and there's a little spigot to drain it out. That is what looks like when your, um, Basically, you know, you think about it, you're putting fruits and vegetables in there, which are mostly water. You're going to get this affluent um, that comes out. This, um, if it smells, it's going to be um, anaerobic, which means no air, and it's going to smell. You don't want to put that on your plants. If it doesn't smell, it's okay to put on your plants, but be sure to dilute it about 10 to 1. So you want it to be a very light, light brown color um, when, you, when you put it on your plants. So again, shouldn't smell, and 2, 10 to 1, water to the leachate, and then you can pour it on your plants. But this, again, you're gonna put a cup of the castings in with a watering can of about a couple gallons worth of water, and uh, wait overnight, and then you can put it on your plants, and it is just gardener's gold, the most amazing thing for your plants. There's so many benefits to worm composting. Very similar to backyard compost, but worm composting is more concentrated, and um, it's gonna give a lot of nutrients to your soil. So it's a soil amendment slash fertilizer. It also keeps the food waste out of the landfill. You're recycling it into something really useful. And when we put our food scraps in the landfill, um, methane gas is released, 
And that methane gas is a greenhouse gas and does contribute to climate change. So by worm composting, we're keeping um, that stuff out of the landfill. And again, we're making it into a useful uh, product for your yard, your garden, and it gives a stronger root system. It also helps um, so you don't have to water nearly as much because it adds a lot of moisture to your soil. And it's gonna have wonderful, healthy plants in the process. So for those of you who are just beginning composting and um, just starting, you're all set. You know enough to get started with worm composting. Now, if you've been doing it for a while or you want to come back in a year when your bin is, this top bin of layer of your bin is full, um, we're going to talk about how to switch your layers. Um, but if you're ready to just get started, you can stop the video now and come back in like a year or so when you're ready to uh, switch your layers and the top layer is full. So you've had your bin for over a year, maybe a year and a half or two. This top layer is going to get really full. Now you can start by harvesting some of the castings out, and I talked about how you would feed on one side and the worms will go over there, and then the side that the worms are not on, but there's no food, you can harvest those castings. And what you can do is just put them into a container and then um, and just pluck the worms out and put them back into your main bin to work. So that's how to reduce some of the top layer, but at some point this is going to get really full. And what you're going to want to do is sw swap your middle layer, and that'll become your top layer. So I'm going to do that right now and show you how it's done. So I'm going to take the top layer, and this is going to be heavy. And I'm going to set it down. And then my middle layer has a bunch of compost in it. So I'm going to empty out all that compost, OK? So assuming I've done that, and I'm going to put that in a container, and it's going to go right into my garden. Um, it's all ready to go. And then. I'm going to go clean it all off and I'm going to have a nice new clean middle layer. So this middle layer actually is going to become my top layer. So what I'm going to do is get some cardboard. You're going to layer it in the top just like you did when you first started your bin. So I put that in the top layer, okay, and that is going to be my new top. And what I'm going to do is start taking all of the, I'm going to set it here for now, move this over. And what I'm going to do is just take a lot of the stuff, I'm going to put some gloves on for this. I'm going to take as much as the food and the worms that I can see and put it in here. So I'm just going to take a bunch of it, put it in here. Just, I've got food. Mainly it's the food you're going to put in here, okay? And this is my new layer now. So there's worms in here, and then there's going to be a bunch of food. Okay. Then what you end up with is your top layer is now going to be basically a layer of almost all finished compost. See? So that is not quite ready to go in your garden. You still have um, a lot of worms in here. So what I do, um, there's this banana trick. I'll take a banana, cut it in half, a, re a real banana, but a ripe one. Cut it in half and bury it in here. And about a week later, you could put two, one on each end. And about a week later, you're going to take the, the banana and it's going to be filled. The insides of the banana are going to be gone. It'll be literally filled with like hundreds of worms. So they love sweet bananas. And when they're ripe, they'll eat it very quickly. So that's a way to get all the worms together. And then what I'm going to do with those two bananas, those half bananas with, filled with worms, I'm going to put it in to my top tray. Okay, so. This again, or you can just let this sit here and keep it as your middle. Eventually, the worms will go up to the top layer. But I found worms to be pretty lazy, so I always like to help them up. But the banana trick is the quickest, easiest way to do it. And then all that middle layer is all finished compost, all ready to go into your garden. And then you're just going to have an empty layer. That's it. That's how you switch your trays out. So that's the end of the worm composting video. I hope you learned a lot and you learned to love worms as much as I do. They're good for the planet and they're good for recycling your food waste. Also check out my um, backyard composting video online and happy composting.